so we're going to start by making the rods that connect the back wheels together and on the cutting guide this piece of chipboard is labeled as the rod and it is 5 16 inch wide by 8 inches long we'll cut this into two pieces here in a minute and I've just blackened the edges and the back and now I'm going to cover it with some decorative paper so now I've got my pieces covered with decorative paper and as you can see I've also cut it into two four inch lengths and now what we want to do is punch holes in each end and we want the hole to hold back an eighth of an inch from each end and so I've just experimented with my crop -a dial till I can get that to the right distance here and now that I have that set and making sure I'm looking at the small end I can just put my piece in and line it up this way and then I'll get my holes all punched evenly so now I have my uh, four holes punched I'm just going to take my sharp scissors and kind of round on the ends a little bit I'm just doing this by eye. You could take a pencil and, and draw it on the back side with your circle template. But I'll just round all of those off and then hit uh, the ends with some ink. And once I've completed that, I'm just going to set these pieces aside for a moment. Here I have the four pieces that are labeled piston rod in the cutting guide. They are one quarter inch by four inches and on two of them I'm just going to mark a little line at two inches and I'm going to put some temporary adhesive on that back half and stick two pieces together now this is my glued end so I'm going to put glued on just down here so I remember which end is glued and then on that glued end I remember we kept our crop -a dial set to that same distance I'll make sure I'm looking at my small end and I'll center that glued end down in there you might have noticed that the first hole I punched wasn't um, too centered so this is just scrap chipboard so I just cut two more pieces and this time I had a more successful hole so you know take a moment it only took me two minutes to to recut that and get it fixed if you have that same issue so now I've got some long brads here and I'm going to take a long brad and join I'm not I'm, j I'm just loosely joining this for right now um, so I can reuse this brad once we cover this with paper so I've made this join and I'll go ahead and do that for the other one and then I'll bring the locomotive in and I'll show you what we're going to do so I put a big fluffy towel down so that I can safely work on the locomotive on its side and in the cutting guide it calls for making a 7 8 inch spacer and that's going to help us determine how far up to put our uh, wheel rods so I got this sitting on the surface uh, not on the rail but on the, the flat surface and I've just got it sitting right there and then I'll bring in my little assembly and first I've got this piece that's the raw chipboard just swung straight up out of the way because I want to kind of center this other one um, and get it placed correctly and once I have that I'm going to swing this side down and what I want to do is look at the end of the piston that's coming out of the cylinder 
and I want to see what length this needs to be. So I'm just going to put it right sitting on top of there and then I'm looking underneath at the piston rod and what I want is for the length of this piece of chipboard that we just added to be about 3 eighths of an inch past the end here. So it doesn't have to be precise. You can get out your little ruler if you want to, but I'm just going to measure and mark a tick mark there. So I put a little piece of uh, white cardstock behind here, so hopefully you can see here's the end of the, the piston rod here. Here's my tick mark. This is about 3 eighths of an inch here. Now there is a little bit of play because that brad hole is an eighth of an inch, but that's okay. What, what We're just looking for something about that long. So I'm going to just do one at a time. Do this side, get it all completed, then do the other side so that I don't get confused on, on which side is which. So I'll get the locomotive out of the way. And then I'm going to cut this off, even with my tick mark, I have a good sharp craft knife blade in here. I'm also going to mark this side as top and this side as back. And then I'm going to take apart the brad. Then I'm going to take apart this temporary adhesive. And in the top piece only, I'm going to punch a hole in this, this other end. Then I'm going to round off the unpunched end and the end we just punched. I'm going to save rounding off of these two for a minute. And then with my black marker on this end that's not punched, I'm going to come down all it doesn't really matter. I'm going to come down probably an inch and a half or so and blacken that inside. Then flip this top one over. And also blacken that one on the inside. And then I'll blacken all the edges. Then I'm going to join these pieces with some wet glue. I'm going to keep my glue back uh, and about an inch, an inch and an eighth or so from the end of that's black. So here's my glue coming on and you can see there's the end and I stopped about an inch and eighth back. And then I've measured, now that it's glued together, I've measured an inch in from the end that only has a hole in one side. I'm going to take my stapler and I'm going to staple that so that my staple comes right up to that one inch mark. Then I'll get some uh, pliers and push these uh, staple ends in a little bit better. Now I'm going to cover the top with some decorative paper. And now I have decorative paper on here. I'll just use my awl to poke through the holes. Now up here in the front, can't poke through all the way because just pull it apart a little bit and you'll be able to poke your, your awl in there. And then with some sharp scissors, I'm just going to round the corners that we didn't round before. Give all that a really good burnish. And then up here at the front, I'm just going to gently kind of pull this into, and I'll show you the form here in a second. It doesn't have to come very much, but it's kind of like we're making a fork at the end so that it can go around the piston rod. And then up here in the front where we punch the hole, I'm going to go ahead and put a brad through just that top layer of the fork. 
and then I can use my Tim Holtz scissors to carefully cut off the end of that brad leg that's hanging over and keep keep a hold of that sharp end and get it in the trash right away. So now we can take another brad and join this piece we just made. It goes in front or on top of the rod that connects the two wheels. Just give that a little bit of a squish. It doesn't have to be too tight because we need it to be able to pivot, but I don't want it to be too loose either. And then I'm just going to trim a little bit off the ends of these brad legs carefully again, just so that when it pivots, it may not end up uh, where I can't, um, where they won't be seen and it will be too tight to get in there to work on it at that point. So just carefully trim off a little bit of each one of those ends. And now I'll bring the locomotive back in. Now I have the locomotive in and I noticed that I forgot to put a brad in this last uh, hole back here. So I'll do that and trim off the legs. So now I'm just doing a little dry fit. Again, I have my spacer here in the front and I've separated the fork up here on the part that's attaching to the um, cylinder rod here. And so what we'll do is we'll put some glue behind this spot and this spot. And we can actually attach them first and just kind of swing this out of the way. Let those set up for a minute. Then reach in here, put some glue on the inside of the fork, and then swing that down into place. So I'll do that. So I know I said glue, but I'm actually using some glossy accents just because I have um, metal and paint and all sorts of different surfaces going on. So I thought that would probably work better. So here you can see me up, up here. I'm just applying some pinch pressure to the front and some downward pressure on the wheels. So now I'll let this set up and for to make sure it's good and dry before I work on the other side. And when I flip it over to the other side, when I put it down on the towel, I'll make sure I come down uh, and, and not slide it around because uh, this part is obviously, even with the, the glue on there, it'll be a little more fragile. So I'll do that on the other side and that will take care of the wheel rods. So now we're ready to add the little steam chest to the locomotive and we need some way to connect the ends here of these, I think they're called valve stems. If not, you locomotive enthusiasts, please forgive me. Anyway, I'm calling the connecting pieces down here the valve stem ends. And our cutting guide says to cut one piece that's 5 eighths by 4 and 1 half and I've done that. I've blackened the edges and I've also gone ahead and covered it with decorative paper on one side. Now I want to make a central line and if this is 5 eighths then our central line will be at 5 sixteenths. I really only need it on the two ends because what I want to do is to punch a hole in either end and I still have my same setup that I've been using where I can punch a hole uh, one eighth of an inch from the end and I'll just test that again. Yep, that is still working fine. So I'll go ahead and use my crop -a dial to center a hole in on each one of these ends. And I don't think I specifically said this, but that is the 1 8 inch uh, end on that crop dowel because our um, dowels are 1 8 inch wide. So now I'm going to subcut this piece into 4 at 1 1 8, 4 at 1 and 1 8. 
Now I'm going to glue these up in sets of two and my paper it's subtle but there is a direction to it so I need to make two mirror images so I want to make uh, the sets will be one with a hole and one without a hole and so I'm going to put them together like this and then I'll have my mirror images and my uh, directional paper will be facing the right way. Now I'm going to round off all four corners on each one. You can either do this by eye or if you have a circle template bring that in and use that 5 8 inch end to round those and over. It doesn't have to be that severe of a rounding or you could just chamfer the corners if you want. Just something to knock off those corners a little bit. And once I had these shaped on the corners I took a moment and with my emery board, especially on the edge that has the hole near it because those will be um, showing the most. And then I've made sure I've got good uh, inking uh, with my marker around the edges and then I also inked with my Distress ink. So now I'll bring in the locomotive and we can see how this will go together. So here I have my little steam chest and it's going to sit right on top of this front support piece and it will get centered. Um, you'll look at it to make sure it gets centered. And then we've sized these um, rods coming out of here and remember we didn't glue them in so that we could easily adjust the sizing. And what we want to do is pull it, get it centered in there, and pull it so it's just about a sixteenth of an inch shy of the front of that back wheel base. And then we need to check a measurement. I put a piece of white cardstock in here, so hopefully this will make it easier to see. What I'm checking for is to see what is the distance between the underside between the underside of the platform and the top of my dowel. And if that is not one quarter of an inch, then on your whatever it is, you'll need to, if it's less than a quarter, you'll need to slice that amount off so that the distance between the whole the top of the hole and the top of the little valve stem end uh, matches. We also need to check to see if if you're like me and you're using any of the little pearls if there's any in the way of where we're going to put this piece in. This piece is going to sit right up underneath that platform so that the hole can line up and if there's a pearl that's behind there, just take the tip of your blade or something, spatula, and remove whatever pearls are in the way. So now I'm just going to do a little dry fit here. I put the valve stem end on the end of the valve, just pressed it in there. I've also made sure that I've got the correct steam chest because I don't want to see the seam. You know, we made these in a mirror image. So I'll just take this and kind of look at it from all angles. See how it's fitting. You'll also want to check where this piece is ending up back in here. Get a mental picture of how far it's sticking out when you have the steam chest centered on the front. So now I've put some glue on the bottom of my steam chest and I've got some glue on the tab. Everything's to length and I'm just going to first attach the little valve end here and then I'll bring the steam chest down. 
So there's the steam chest and the valve rod installed. And then we can just repeat that for the other side. So for the front of the locomotive, I'm going to use this element from the paper and I'm going to cut kind of around the leaves a little bit over here, come down along this slope, cut around the light and then back up on this side. And I will cut that out and then be back. So here is my element all cut out. I did cut inside of these little spaces just a little bit. Um, and then I've inked all of the edges. Now I'm going to back it with some black cardstock and then cut out, cut the shape out again. Oh, about a sixteenth of an inch or so. Try that and see how much uh, I like that amount of reveal. I can always trim it off if I want something less. So I'll go ahead and get that done. So now I have my element cut out and black backed with some black cardstock. I've prepped it with a piece of score tape, which I figured out what size I could use to go on here. And now I'm just going to center it on the front and put it down with that score tape. So there's the front of the locomotive completed. And on the back of the locomotive, I thought that there was need of an additional element below the round element that we put at the top of the back panel. So I'm going to cut out this large butterfly from the corner here and back it with some black cardstock just like I did the front element. And I'll be back to show you how I put it on. So here's my butterfly cut out with the black cardstock around it. And then I'm just going to put it down here underneath the circular element. So that completes the Steampunk Locomotive Project. I hope you've enjoyed seeing how this project came together and are encouraged to try making one of your own because it certainly was a lot of fun to make. This is April with Craft Knife Chronicles. Thanks for watching and bye for now.